the college football experience, Oregon State Beavers 2023 season preview episodes brought to you by Patreon. Yes, uh, score exclusive perks, content, and contests, including our NFL win totals contest with a thousand dollars. Uh, you know, up for the top prize there. Join today, sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, this is Eric Metcalf. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Experience Oregon State Beavers 2023 season preview episode. I'm excited to talk about my favorite team in college football. Bold statement. My it's no fuck everything else. All right. I'm ECU, Colorado till I die, but hey, this is America's team. It's no longer the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> It is no longer the Dallas Cowboys. It is the Oregon State Beavers, and I'm super excited to talk about them. I locked them up a year ago, won a bunch of cash on them because they were fantastic a year ago. And really, if Go Branson doesn't throw like three pick six to start the Utah game, because if you look at the yards per play and what they put up against the Utes, you could argue they should have beat them if you just don't open up with three pick sixes. 42 to 16. That's a tough argument to make either way. Dude, but dive into that box score. Dive into that uh, box. Look, uh, beyond that, you game, can't start a game with back-to-back pick sixes. You can't. Uh, uh, <laughs> it makes it a lot harder uh, when your offense, you know, which has been good but not super dynamite. You know. Well, that was the one gla- flaw, and they should have beat USC. We watched that game. Should have beaten USC. Should have beat USC once again. Go Branson throwing yeah. interception after interception. You're like, dude, just punt, and the game is over. Right. All right, if you just don't throw a pass. You beat this team. The defense locked down Caleb Williams. They were a very good defense a year ago. Three point loss in Corvallis to USC. Three point loss at Washington uh, on a Friday night. Yeah. Other than that, 10 and three. Freaking great year. Dominated Florida's asses. Nice beaver. Nice beaver indeed. Nice beaver. <laughs> uh, no, buddy. Uh, Jonathan Smith for real. And look, I think he attacked the clear weakness of this team. We're going to, I know we're going to break down every game on the schedule. We're going to go talk about the offense, the defense, the special teams, but Penny C. I am really devastated for the people of Corvallis. This is a good fan base. This is a team that I think makes college football better. Yeah. It's small town college football. The fact that they have a fair shot as, as the same, uh, you know, as the same as Los Angeles or uh, Atlanta, or, uh, you know, I know Athens is 45 minutes from Atlanta, but still, yeah. you know, no matter what you say, Austin, Texas, you know, that's what I love about Kansas state. Yeah. Th- they're in the small little part and they have a shot and they, they, if they, they and they play well, they can beat anybody. Yeah. Right. It breaks my fucking heart. Like I am really upset with the future of college football. Right. Like we're going to go to this 12 team playoff 15 years too late. And because of that teams like Washington state and Oregon state who like, to me, they're the, the coolest teams, the coolest brands in the pac 12. Yeah. Maybe you throw Utah in there. I mean, among the brands in the uh, pac 12, are they really the only small uh, Holman? Yeah. I mean, yeah, those two, those two, those two. Yeah. Cause what uh, Tucson's a big enough city. Tucson's a big enough city. Tempe's big boulders right outside of Denver. Uh, I guess you could say Oregon, uh, Eugene. Yeah. Eugene fair. is pretty small, but they have but, Phil Knight. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of, and yeah. before Phil Knight, they were Oregon state. Right. Yeah. Uh, but buddy, um, so I'm, I'm, I am really devastated like by the potential, but I think there's a shot here. They just redid their stadium. I love how they, didn't tear down their stadium. They just said, Hey, we're going to redo it and make it better. Yeah. It is the closest stadium to the, to the players. Uh, 
in all of the Pac-12. Well, even though I know there's no Pac-12 anymore. When you say closest a stadium, closest to the so it's just awesome. It's an awesome. It's like Oklahoma State's. It's right on top of the players. Yeah. Right. Oh. Okay. Distance. Yeah. And and to me, it's everything that's great about college football. And I, I want them. People say like, okay, they end up in the Mountain West or they go with the Pac-4 and then they add Mountain West teams. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Personally, I think the Big Twelve should get them. I think the Big Twelve. I don't understand conference realignment. I don't understand how Rutgers and Maryland get this pass or, or Northwestern because of Purdue. its history. Yeah. yeah. Indiana and, and Oregon state and Washington state, which over since we've had the, if we're going to let television execs be in charge, well, since 1990, Oregon state and Washington state have won way more games than the likes of, of Rutgers, Rutgers. Yeah. then even more than Maryland, even more than Northwestern. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what are we doing here? As a sport, we got to find a way to get them part of the bunch. But look, I still say they're America's team. What we got to do is root for them to dominate this year, just like they did last year. But once again, fix, you know, they were right there in those games. All they needed was a better quarterback play. I think he's addressed that. But moving forward, I think Jonathan Smith's one of the most underrated coaches in the country, right? I would have to agree. He's pl- he's coaching at his alma mater. Yeah. He was part of Chris Peterson's staff at Washington and Boise State. Yeah. If there's anyone equipped for this life on the road as a group of five, I think they're way better than every Mountain West team. I actually think I would lay a solid amount, right? Well, last year they did what against Mountain They beat West? Boise by 17. They beat Fresno, I think, only by three, but it was at Fresno, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, they're better this year, obviously, with better quarterback play, right? Presumably. And I think they can be that group of five team that. I don't think they should be a group of five team, but I'm saying like, okay, if they can prove it over this next three year stretch before the college football playoff has to rewrite itself. Yeah. The big 12, uh, didn't they say they wanted the Pacific time slot? Here's my, here's my angle here. Colorado plays in the mountain time zone. So you basically only have uh, Utah, Arizona, and Arizona state go out and get, I know you're, you're, they're talking about Yukon and look, the Big Ten is at 18 teams. I hate all this shit. I hate it all, right? There's speculation that, you know, these conferences are going to stop at 20 or 24 when it's all said and done, right? It's two conferences. Yeah. Well, that that's point. why the Big 12, it, look, the Big Ten already has, and I know that it's not all your call. The TV money has to be there. But Oregon State, Washington State need to be in there. They need to get in there. They need that pass, man. Yep. And regardless, though, if you're telling me they're not going to get that opportunity, Please, Jonathan Smith, stay the course at your alma mater well, because this he's got the potential to turn this into the top, the, the, essentially what Boise was with Peterson. Well, let, let's talk about that because honestly, like, okay, the big, the, the, the expanded playoff, you know, the teams, as long as there is access and I know that you've the, mentioned, there's not going to be access. If, That's if they, why it's very dependent on like teams like Oregon state over the next three years or Tulane. That, or the or, group of five. Yeah. If it I is. would even argue some of the ACC and Big Twelve. What we need is we don't Those want to play to off win. with all Big Ten and SEC teams. Yeah, well, they are the new enemy. Yeah, yeah. Um, if if we can't get wins from the other teams that you know basically guarantee or or advocate for uh, the group of five, uh, as it were, or whatever the Pac twelve, if that's still there's a, a good start with TCU, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if good, you can get start. that every yeah. year, then maybe you can get. The the six, uh, I think six is probably out the door moving forward. But maybe five conference champions. It should be six at the very least, uh, guaranteed spots. And and if uh, Oregon State finds themselves in whatever it is, the Mountain West or the Pac-12, uh, and then and and they're getting one of those uh, conference champion spots, which they should, as like what what would they be like the the fifth best conference, assuming uh, the Mountain. Maybe oh, they even, certainly they're probably be. better than the ACC. I think they're the fifth best. They might be the fourth best. Well, yeah. yeah, you had Oregon State, Washington State, and who knows with Cal and Stanford. But I mean, Oregon State, Washington State, they're in the conversation yeah. either way. Uh, assuming that that conference gets a, uh, a, a an automatic bid, Oregon State, like you said, is uh, based on last year and where the trajectory of this program could be ready to compete for a he's conference on, championship every year. And he's only forty four years old, so yeah. I I just I know. Look, he's a beaver. That's his, it's his alma mater. Yeah. I know 
a lot of schools are going to come calling because I think he's that good of a coach. Look, right? Uh, Brian Lindgren, offensive coordinator, been with them for four years. He's a beaver, right? They got to do this, man. They got to do this. Defensive coordinator Trent Bray, been with them uh, for four years. Uh, he's a beaver. Oh yeah, let's and they're go. Uh, like uh, forty-four for the let's head coach, go. forty-two for the offensive coordinator, nice forty for beaver. the uh, like they're 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 all tight. They seem like a tight all unit. That's bitch. right. Beavers. They got to do it. This is the savior, man. This is the savior because it's bullshit. It is ridiculous. It is disgusting. What is happening? To to the school, it's been they've been good. Remember when Matt Mark Sanchez went into Corvallis, took a loss. Remember when they beat the piss out of Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl? Yeah. When Jonathan Smith was the quarterback for them. You know what? Th- this really could be like the next Boise as far as America's darling because they've been put out. They've been put out for no the- for no good reason. Yeah. They have good for fans. N- nothing of their yeah. own doing. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. But I think Jonathan Smith could be that guy. Patty C. What do you make of old Jonathan Smith? I mean, I think he's doing a great job. The offense was uh, pretty darn good last year. Defense even better. But uh, look, if if this offense continues to progress in the right direction, then overall, I mean, I think he does what it takes to win games. One and zero against Dan Lanning and and Patty. See, let's talk about this because this is disgusting too. You know, the Civil War has been happening. Oregon, Oregon State, the Civil War. Yeah. Do we know what the fate of that is moving forward? Well, I can tell you this. It's been happening for 129 years. Yeah. Right? If you the let... fate of that organ says that, that they would like to preserve it. But here's my thing, and I think NC Nick brings up a great point. He highly doubts. A, I think the Big Ten is going to s- s- probably do nine or 10 conference games with an 18 team conference. You would think. Uh, but yeah. also. I highly doubt they're going to be doing games in on the road. So in like Pullman or Cavallis, which sucks, it sucks. Yeah. If this, if 130 years of tradition go down, goes down the tube for what I think amounts to like, you know, chasing a dollar that with how fast things are changing right now, uh, uh, in three, four years, especially like you mentioned with the big 12s, like basketball angle that they're like cornering, and and putting themselves squarely at the negotiating table, uh, moving forward, th- they're due for a big contract, uh, you yeah, know, coming at some up. point. And so, like all, all these teams, I know uh, Oregon State's not in the Big Twelve yet, but if they get there, Dude, they went to the Elite Eight in basketball like what three years ago. <laughs> yeah, I I just feel like money shouldn't be. I know. Okay, Rutgers has been getting more money than Florida State for the last try twice the money for Florida yeah. State the last 10 years. I'm sure that's going to make a difference on the field at some point or another. It hasn't yet, you know? And so, and while the schools like obviously are, are, are financially driven, uh, I just, uh, you're just throwing so much tradition away for something that may not end up making that big of a difference on the field at all. Uh, maybe it's for like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It, 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 they're, they're killing the, the sport, but look, Jonathan Smith's got a plan and I'm on board. And they're my favorite fucking team. I hope they go undefeated and beat the piss out of everyone on their schedule. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's talk about it. Plus um, the Beavers are just fun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, man. Come on. Uh, look, we're going to talk about the portal, the offense, the defense, the special teams, and uh, break down every single game on the Beavers schedule in 2023 because I think there's a lot to be optimistic about. But before we do that, I want to tell you that the college football experience, uh, Oregon State Beavers 2023 season previews brought to you by our very own sports gambling podcast, Patreon. Yes, it is the perfect fit for the diehard DJ. Sign up uh, for the Patreon to get access to exclusive contests, including uh, NFL win totals contests with $1,000 for first place, plus a monthly SGP stories podcast. Uh, remember, we were pals with Mike Leach. We might tell, uh, rest in peace, Coach Leach here, but we might have to tell uh, a couple good stories revolving Coach. Uh, on that ad free uncensored show, highlighting the best stories from decades of being DJs. There's even a discord channel for it just for the patrons. Uh, the sports gambling podcast has, and always will give out free picks. So don't get it twisted. We're not trying to charge for picks. The Patreon's just a great way to support the network and fight back against the, the, you know, corporate gambling because we've been rocking independently since 2011. Let's go. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon. The sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon. Remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. All right, we are back on the college football experience. And, folks, remember, uh, 
We also uh, host the college basketball experience. Like I said, the ducks, I know I'm sorry, the, the, the ducks and the beavers have had tough times. Uh, you know, the state of Oregon past year or two, uh, but it wasn't that long ago. I think three years ago that the ducks and the beavers both made the elite eight. Wow. So uh, check us out with the season tips. We'll be here every single night of the season. Talking, talking beavers, basketball. Um, and uh, also the college baseball experience. Oregon state keeps a great, great baseball program too, man. I mean, that's what I'm saying. They don't deserve any of this shit. Um, so uh, yeah, check out that. And also the FCS college football experience for any Portland state Viking fans out there, perhaps uh, in the big sky. So subscribe to all of those. Also the big 12 experience, maybe, maybe some hope we come together as one on YouTube, <laughs> youtube.com slash the college experience, subscribe, tell a friend um, Patty C let's talk about the portal here because I'm very excited. Now their best defensive player, arguably Omar Spates, Brian Kelly was able to give him a big bag of cash mm-hmm. and get him out of there. Right. Yeah. Legal uh, teams leader, leading tackler, 83 tackles. That's a big hit. That is a very big hit. Yeah. Let's talk about some of these other losses. Jam Griffin at running back heads out to Ole Miss. This one just happened on August 4th yesterday, mm-hmm. right? Not much of a producer. Okay. Zero rushing yards, I believe. No, no, no. I'm I'm looking at the wrong stat. 488 rushing yards. Uh, yeah. That does hurt. Okay. Third, third leading rusher. Wide receiver John Dunmore hits the portal. He hasn't landed anywhere yet. Hurts a little bit. And remember, they lost Luke Musgrave, their star tight end. He is on the Green Bay Packers now um, from a season ago. So they do have to replace that. But JT Byrne, another tight end, heads out to Cal, the Golden Bears. Mm hmm. Interesting there. Safe. Uh, what's what that? else we got? Safety. Jonathan Riley ha- is in the portal. Hasn't landed anywhere yet. Yeah. Quarterback Treston Gibia, who originally was at Nebraska, transferred to Oregon State. Didn't work out for him at Oregon State, and he's now at Ohio State. And I think he's pretty far on that depth chart, Ohio State. So I mean, played pretty well last year. Ten, 10 of eleven, ninety-one yeah. percent completion percentage for Ooh. them. But uh, again, that's uh, not exactly full time duty there. Well, Chance Nolan, their other quarterback, he heads out to TCU. So both of the college football playoff teams grabbing some of the Oregon State backups. I'll tell you what, between Go Branson and Chance Nolan, this team uh, was 16 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. I'll, systemically, that seems like a problem. It can't be that both quarterbacks are that interception prone relative to the number of touchdowns they've thrown. Something that uh, launch maybe chairs, pay buddy. attention. Launch uh, that's true. Big time launch here. Uh, cornerback Ron Harge the third heads out to Colorado State, and that is the last of their departures. Not terrible. Okay. I mean, a couple guys, a couple pieces. Spates, the big one. Yep. Uh, incoming Patty C. What do we got? Offensive tackle Grant Stark from Nevada. This was a big time get for them because he was, I think, the, one of the best offensive linemen in the Mountain West. Nice. So they grab him. They grabbed DJ Ugalele from Obviously. Clemson, former five star recruit yeah. out of California. Yeah. Uh, big time, big time get for the Beavs. DJ right? U, 62% completion percentage, 22 touchdowns, seven interceptions last year. Even um, if they get that production, yeah. that they're going to win more games. Rushing yards, 913 uh, career rushing yards. That's over- what I love about this play. The way that Oregon State ran the ball last year, even if you could lately's not lighting it up from a touchdowns to interceptions ratio. He's got good enough wheels where good Branson, they could do option read off of him. Yeah. They could just get him outside of the pocket. Yeah. RPO. Yeah. It's a huge get. I know they have Aiden Childs who they're super excited about and Gold Branson's back still. So yeah. they have three good court. Uh, like, I don't want to say Gold Branson's a good quarterback, but he's young and he got a lot of starts. He so he was a pretty high recruit. Yeah. Out of what? So they California. got three guys. They got yeah. three guys that I think you should be excited about. Then they go out and get defensive end uh, from Wyoming under, under Craig, uh, under uh, Craig bowl. Uluwase Omoto. So ho nice. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I know that they, they like that get too. And then linebacker, Mason Tufaga coming in from the Utah Utes, Patty C. Nice. Utah's got a great defense. They play Utah. Well, once again, the entire uh, West Coast uh, and in- inland of the West Coast going to the Pacific Islands to get their talent. Hey, Pac 12, if you're looking for a place to expand and you're completely <laughs> desperate, <laughs> they have four teams. Maybe consider Hawaii. <laughs> Just a thought. 
They only have four teams right now, but yeah, I mean, right now everything's a possibility. Pack four. Yeah, Sorry. Sacramento State should be a possibility. Yeah. Um, Jermaine Terry, tight end from Cal, coming into to to Oregon State. He's penciled in as a starter. Petty C. Nice. Uh, and then they uh got Illinois linebacker Calvin Hart. Illinois had the top defense in the country a year ago. Petty C. There you go. Uh, back to that Cal tight end. It seems like uh, they have a similar offensive identity to Cal. So bringing in a guy that hopefully can run block a little bit will hopefully work seamlessly. Yeah. And that's what they did in the portal. But I think, I think they, uh, they won the portal by getting, by getting their, their look, by getting DJU. Well, I also expect Calvin Hart to, if, if he doesn't start to at least be getting substantial, substantial uh, minutes, I actually think he's going to start. He's going to start dude. Let, hear me out on this here. Jermaine Terry's a starter. Pencil yeah. is a starter. Ukulele, who we think is going to be a starter at the quarterback spot, right? Yeah. Uh, Stark, the offensive tackle from uh, Nevada, is is a starter, right? Yeah. And then um, we will see about the Utah transfer Tufaga, the linebacker. But the other guys are pretty much this. This is a huge win for me, in my opinion, because yes, they lost a, a stud. A linebacker in spades, but everyone else is is uh, like is going to start for this team. I feel like. Yeah, I mean they're bringing a lot back. I mean being able to bring in uh, uh, an all conference caliber offensive lineman on a team that already had one of the best offensive lines in the country and is returning all of their offensive line. Yeah, that could be. I mean adding depth to an already awesome offensive line that will help ukulele. Ask uh, ask Oregon about the uh, what was it? Eighteen straight run plays, <laughs> just domination. And came back from twenty one points to beat Oregon. Uh, impressive. Um, look, it's hard to say because let's let's talk about Jonathan Smith and let's be realistic here. Okay, two and ten, but he took over for Gary Anderson, who was he had a really one and eleven year. Oh, before. he was vocal about this though. They didn't have enough defensive backs. Remember, I remember he was he's using wide receivers at uh, like. Yeah. He was like, this is going to take some time Yeah, because we're, we're the cupboard is that empty. Yeah. Right. So, and that's what it did. And I thought he got robbed in the COVID year. They were in every game, pull up the COVID year. I mean, when you think about five and seven from a two and 10 first year, five and seven into the second year, that's pretty solid improvement, you know? And then if you throw away the COVID year, like, well, even if you dive into the COVID year, I think all their losses by one score. And some of those bogus spot against Washington bothers me to this day. Let me take a look at that. 2020 season, we had a uh, a 10 point loss against Washington State, uh, a six point loss at Washington. No, that and they should have won that. That was a horrible, horrible spot. Remember, the Pac-12 officiating has been known to be and the worst. Washington in the country. should have gone to the uh, Pac-12 championship that year, but had yeah. COVID. Uh, a six point loss at Utah. They did. They did beat Cal and Oregon. A three-point loss against Stanford, and then a thirteen-point loss against Oregon. Uh, yeah, they Arizona. were a lot better, a lot, lot better, better than the two yeah, and five yeah. record indicates. Um, and then year three, uh, seven and six, right? Or I guess uh, year three, year four would be seven and six. So if you if you take out COVID, two and ten, five and seven, seven and six, and then last year ten and three, that's a pretty solid trajectory. Dude, I think uh, you know, I think he's one of the best coaches in America. And I, I, I really believe now this is where Oregon state needs to make sure they keep him happy because I do believe his phone will be ringing every single off season. Well, especially if, you know, one of these big time schools needs a new coach yeah. USC say, uh, uh homie, he's from Pasadena. I know he goes yeah. pro, yeah. you know, uh, look, you know, what was impressive about last year is the margin of victory in the wins. Like you mentioned, they busted Boise's ass. Yeah, a close one against uh, Fresno. This might well, be Fresno the most... won the Mountain West though. Yeah, I mean, Fresno was a good team, and that yeah. was on the road. Most impressive win in the whole season. Montana State, twelve and two, <laughs> FCS semifinalists, beat them by forty. Yeah, 68, 28. Yeah. You put Montana State, you know, in in the WAC or, or I'm sorry, in the MAC or something. They dominate that conference. Yeah, Montana State would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, I think they're actually. Pretty damn legit. Now I, I have to admit, while by midseason I was rooting for them and starting to gain respect for them, it never really, uh, you know, they never really processed me as an elite team. Probably until they whooped Florida's ass in the bowl game, and I said, "Oh, pretty damn good." But even the bowls, you have to kind of throw away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, 
right now looking at them, wondering if I would say the USC game, they did the best job defensively on anyone, even the Utah. They had the best defense in the Pac 12 last year. It was not Utah, it was Oregon State. And I mean, from a number standpoint, it is too. Yeah. Like, uh, and I think they're only going to be continue to be really good, you know, like, so, well, you're right. Uh, USC's lowest offensive output. Other than that was one game against uh, uh, Utah where they scored 24 compared to the 17 that Oregon state held them to, and that, but that's the bowl. Uh, that's the Pac-12 that's championship, Pac-12 championship where Caleb Williams gets injured. Yeah. Other than that, USC's yeah. lowest point output of the entire season was uh 42 points. That's what I'm saying. And Oregon State holds them to 17. And that was off of interceptions. Off of interceptions. Like it was two, they only had three, I think, on the like, on actual offensive <laughs> taking the, the yeah, yeah, going down the field. Wow. Um okay. Gotta that, give the Beavers some respect here, people. Oh, I'm excited about them, buddy. Let's talk about it. Because offensively, a year ago for uh Brian Lindgren, 37th best scoring offense in the country, 28th best rush offense, 104th in pass offense. We talked about this. That was mm-hmm. the clear weakness charting at 60th in total offense. If they could fix that. Gold Branson had the happy feet. Every time he would drop back, the Dude, feet would start he, shuffling. I, I, if they just didn't throw a pass all year, they would have probably won 11 and two. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, this offense, you know, Aiden Childs is a guy that everyone's raving about and he was a big time recruit. I know anyone that pays attention to recruiting is super excited about his future. They think he's going to be an NFL player. They still have Gold Branson back, who started a shit ton of games last year for him. And then they bring in DJU. I think they're very sound at the quarterback position. They have three guys that I think you can win games with. Yeah. Right. Uh, they have uh, Damian Martinez, who I just drafted in, in fantasy because this guy is a fucking stud. All right. He came along last year and don't forget. They still have Deshaun Fenwick. Yeah, who's your number two pick in the yeah. fantasy draft. You're expecting big things from him. Well, this offensive line, dude, they are a power football team in the pac 12. Yeah. People don't realize that they just think, Oh, J- oh Joe Senko and Hushman Zada went there. No, this is a power football team in yeah. the pac 12, 6.1 yards per rush for Martinez. Fenwick's good too. the backup Fenwick. Yeah. 553 yards, five yards of rush. They're both good. Uh, they're tight ends. Remember, they run a two tight end set most times. Uh, Jack Velling and Jer- the transfer from Cal J- Jermaine Terry are the two tight ends that are penciled to be starting. Keep an eye on this guy, Silas Bolden, the wide receiver. He is a stud. He uh, was one of the leaders nationally. In, he can uh, fly, dude. And he kick can return. Fly. Let me let me let me get that pulled. He's up. just 5'8", 153. 153 pounds, dude. <laughs> That's light. That is light. Tied for 11th in the nation with uh, 27 yards per kick return. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a lightning bolt. Keep an eye out on him for their big play capabilities. Anthony Gold also back at the other wide receiver spot. He's also a great returner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they got guys. Uh, the offensive line returns. Uh, basically, five of five if you add in the fact Stark was a starter at Nevada. So, Gold number two in the nation in yards per punt return 18.3. That's a lot. And uh, also tied for the lead in the nation with two punt return touchdowns. You're a big special teams, uh, you know, guy indicating the quality of the coach. So great returners getting after it, no. but I'll say this the kicker kick game, <laughs> the kicker game, Everett Hayes, not great last year. He is back. What was he? 13 of 18. Yeah. Uh yeah right uh, Did I have that? no 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 six of thirteen right six, ooh six of thirteen not good yeah but uh obviously you know that that's something to pay attention to defensively Patty C let's just talk about this because Will uh, I'm sorry not not uh, Trent Bray getting it done sixteenth in scoring defense fourteenth in rush defense sixty fourth in pass defense you got to remember every team can pass the shit out of the ball in the pack 12, yeah. uh, 25th in total defense, top 25 defense, Patty C pretty damn good. The best defense in the pack 12 from a number standpoint. Impressive. Um, and they return. They, so they return. Look at the defensive line here. This is what's interesting. Two of three back on the D line. Uh, Sione Lola, Hela, Lola, Hey, James Rawls back. They are breaking in Isaac Hodge uh, Hodgins, a senior at the defensive tackle spot. We got to pay attention to that linebacking core. Like we talked about, obviously you lose space, but you bring in, you bring in Hart from Illinois. You also bring in Tufaga from Utah. 
They do return uh, Josh McCartan, a senior who uh, uh, John McCartan, John McCartan. Okay. Um, 34 tackles. Two. So, so a little bit, a little bit there. You circle the, the linebacking core. Cause I mean, those guys are probably good. Illinois had the best defense in the country, but I'm just saying like, we got to see it a little bit more. Uh, also Easton, uh, how do I pronounce this? McCarnes M- M- Arnold. Nice. That's a guy on the linebacking Macar- core. Macarena's do the Macarena. Yeah. Do the Macarena. No, 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 <laughs> do no, no, the no, fucking no, no, Macarena. No, no, no. Uh, secondary. They got to play that anytime he makes a big play. Come on. <laughs> secondary Ryan Cooper's back in the nickelback spot. And then you have He's good for 45 tackles, six on the team and uh, senior tackles. Yeah. Uh, Kitan Oladipo uh, at the free safety spot is back. I am a little bit concerned about these corners because they've got brand new corners, but at least they're upperclassmen Sen- senior Jaden Robinson penciled in to be the starter. He did start one game a season ago. Uh, the other was Tyrese Ivy. So that there's a little bit of uncertainty, but you know, he's a junior and Achille Arnold at the strong safety spot. Patty C. Uh, they uh, Ola Ola Dapo or a lot of Poe. Uh, yeah. Second on the team and tackles uh, six passes defense as well. I think this team has a lot of passes defensed. Maybe that is the well, key to their. Uh, you also have like defensive approach. Look at all those teams that pass the hell out of the ball. In the past That's 12. true. Maybe yeah. <laughs> inflates those stats a little bit. Um, breaking into brand new punter and senior Josh Green, Patty C. What do you make of? Do you think the defense will put up better numbers this year? It's tough to put up much better yeah, if you're I leading agree. the Pac-12 and the, most of the teams in the Pac-12 can move the ball. I think. Th- you have to be happy with that. You want to see a, at least a marginal improvement from the offense, but really more than anything, you want to see the interceptions go down. Yeah. And you know what else you want to be happy about? I think the offense is going to take a big jump just at the quarterback position. Yeah. Well, yeah. If he doesn't have to just it, with his mobility, if he can pick up a first down running the ball, instead of having to throw into traffic, you know, um, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet necessarily, but it makes a big difference in yeah. the outcome of the game. Yeah. Uh, and I can tell you this, you want a schedule and we're going to talk, go game by game in a second, but you want a schedule that gives you these teams, Petty C theoretically. If you told me I had to, I'm going to be coaching this year in the pac 12. You're going to want games against Arizona, Arizona state, Colorado, Stanford, and Cal, right? Those are the ones you want. They get all of them on the schedule, except Arizona state. Even Washington State's a, a winnable game. Yeah, but they—I mean, they were a winning team a year ago, so I didn't exclude them. But yes, yes. Of you, don't wanna, you don't want to—you don't want to throw shade at one of our. Uh, we love them too. Our victims, the exception here. of the Rolovich situation, right? Um, um, but either way, that's that's a very winnable game for Oregon State too. The hard games on the schedule we'll get to, but at first glance, it's a manageable schedule. Yeah, we're gonna talk all about it. We're gonna go game by game on the schedule. Uh, but before we do that, we want to tell you that the Oregon State Beavers 2023 season preview episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Yes, the NFL season is right around the corner, and Underdog Pick'em is a great way to get down on a ton of NFL player props. It's available in a ton of different markets. Plus, there's plenty of opportunities to win in their daily MLB contest. And of course, make sure you enter their best ball mania where first place gets $3 million. Head on over to underdogfantasy.com. Use that promo code SGPN for 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Once again, that's underdogfantasy.com. Promo code S G P N. All right, Patty C. We have the schedule. If you're watching on YouTube, you see the sweet ass graphic. Shout out to Cam Kerr. The win total sitting at eight and a half. They went 10 games a year ago with, with lawn chairs sitting out there. <laughs> Patty C. Things are looking good. I lean over just blindly, but let's 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 take a look at the schedule here because something stands out to me. What's that? With the exception of the Civil War, all of their toughest opponents have to go to Corvallis. And last year, half the stadium was under construction. This year, it is open up. And like I said, it is the closest to the field. And they put the opposing team, or they put their student section right by the opposing On team. On top of the yeah. opposing team. So, it, hey, watch out. Oh, I love it. Watch out. So, week one. The on Hornets' a, nest is real here. On a Sunday, comes in. Or Oregon State heads to San Jose to take on Chevin Cordero and the Spartans. And San Jose State opens up the season at USC. Come on, Spartans. But uh, no, we need Oregon State. I do expect San Jose State to be a bowl team this year. 
So Oregon State needs to take. They're going on the road, which is crazy. Yeah, they need to make sure they handle business here because I do think there's an advantage of playing a week zero game. Um, I got the Beavers winning it, but does, I, uh, San, San Jose State gets uh, uh, USC. USC week. Yeah, one. they might even be banged up from that. You got to go Oregon State here. Uh, one and zero. Now Dan Hawkins, it's the Big Twelve. <laughs> All right, uh, and UC Davis, good FCS school. Sure. They are coming into Corvallis. Can't be asleep at the wheel on this. Can't one. be asleep. You know, once again, that's a very good FCS. So, but, uh, but two and zero. Yeah. When then Brady Hoke and San Diego state, they were this close to the pack. Maybe, maybe they'll be in the pack four. All right. Maybe they'll be in the pack four by then. Maybe it'll be the pack five. <laughs> um, San Diego state coming into Corvallis, Patty. So who you got winning this. Uh, I think you gotta go uh, Oregon state here, but it's not exactly a game. I mean, we need D, if DJU is playing poorly, straight up poorly, then this team could be vulnerable in a game like this. Yeah, but I got him three and zero. I do too. And then this is a big one. This is a big one because they need to get through this one. I feel like this is September twenty third. They head to Pullman Stadium or to Pullman Washington Martin Stadium uh, to take on Washington State. I favor Oregon State, but this is a game, buddy. I actually think it is good though that they get them on September twenty third because Pullman can be a lot colder than the rest of the Pac twelve places yeah. in November. Although yeah. Oregon State Corvallis probably doesn't true, but no fear Pullman, Pullman is, is much fucking, colder than even Corvallis. I mean, I haven't been to Corvallis, but yeah, I just think that it's in a desert. Well, both yeah. both the schools in uh, uh, Oregon are on the eastern, you know, close to the eastern seaboard. Whereas Washington is the only truly northwestern like desert yeah, school, so yeah, it does probably get a lot colder there. I'm taking Oregon State, but I fe- State this is a tricky State. game to me because I think this is going to be close. It's going to be close. What was this last year? Twenty four ten. Oregon to State one. Fourteen last year. Okay. No, no, I'm looking at USC. Was it twenty four ten? Twenty four ten last year, right? Twenty four ten. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's going to be a game. It's going to be fun. That's a sneaky game though, because it's a look ahead spot. Because prime time Friday night. Oh man. There is no way. I'm going to go ahead and say this. There's no way the Utah Utes are winning this game. Walk into that stadium and get it There's done. There's no way. Is it going to be top 10? 42 to 16 last year in Salt Lake. Well, you know, you know, Utah hasn't, they're like 20 and one in their past 21 at Rice Eccles. I understand that, but that's a huge uh, 26 point gap. You want to bet on it. this? I feel great about this one. I don't want to bet on this game, but I bet they'll have taken an L by now. Well, if, well, maybe at Washington State, but four and one. I got him five and zero. Oh. All right, this is the game that bites him. Boy, if they can beat Utah, though, the freaking momentum. Actually, the momentum might be a bad thing because you know no, you don't this want is to, the game that gets him right here at Cal. Wilcox, part of that Chris Peterson tree as well, yeah. knows it very well. They the, beat him thirty-eight ten last year in Corvallis, though. That's a big difference, man. Got to go to yeah. Berkeley, the intimidating uh, no, place. Yeah, that's like Boston College, where it's like sleepy. Two years ago at Berkeley, well, it's they not won only by that; 14. it's the emotions of you just beating Utah, a top ten team. Yeah. yeah, the letdown factor. That's where you learn, you know. And it's not even on Jonathan Smith; it is a little bit in, as far as his like mental preparation of his players. But like, no matter what, you get a win like that against the two-time defending Pac-12 champion, especially one that's saying peace on the way out the door. Yeah, the letdown is obvious. Then I'll give them the win there. So we both have them five and one, five and one. And I want people to look USC is not on the schedule, so they don't get a chance to play USC. They do get to play. It might get them in the pac 12 championship. They get to play Oregon, Washington, and UCLA. The three teams very responsible for the destruction. Three of the four of the pac 12 Patty C UCLA is not going into Corvallis and getting that dub with the freshman quarterback on the fucking road. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Did they play last year? I'm no, trying, no, they did not. Okay, so I, I would, yeah, I wouldn't think. That, I want to see how this Dante Moore five star hot shot uh, quarterback looks, but I doubt. Yeah, uh, last time they played Chip Kelly, though, was at UCLA in nineteen. Jonathan Smith won by seventeen. Jeez, it's been a while, yeah. but shoot, that was when uh, Oregon State was not the team they are today. Yeah, give me the, give me the Beavers. Six and one. Six and one. Heading into the bye. They head to Tucson. It's a little sneaky game to me. This yeah. is a sneaky game to me. Yeah. I favor Oregon State, but I could see them. I could see Jaden Delara. They have enough firepower. Remember, Arizona beat UCLA a year ago. They're just a they're good enough with offensive firepower that yeah. they put a fear in, in to me anyone, but 
between this and the buffs, they're due a second loss, I think, potentially. I mean, I would obviously favor them against both teams. I don't even know that I believe that. Ten and two is very uh possible, you know, and especially by this point, uh, what would this be? Uh seven, eight and one. Right? Eight and one after nine games, if you're talking about at Arizona yeah. and at Colorado. Uh um, I favor them in both of them. So you got them eight and one? Eight and one. I'm gonna say seven and two. Well, then they're home to Stanford. Nine and one. What was that? What was that game last year? Now I'm all over the freaking place. Uh, you're all over the place. They beat Stanford to, by one in, in the, on the farm. Uh, now they're home to the Washington Huskies and this is where it gets tricky. Yeah. I mean, let's uh, all time here. This is where it gets tricky. They beat Washington and Corvallis last time they played. 35 and 68 all time against the Huskies. But they won the last the last time they played it in Corvallis. Look. I'm giving it to uh, uh to Oregon State here. I am too. And then you get the Civil War on November 24th. The final Civil War, perhaps, Patty C. It's disgusting. It is. Uh I think more likely 10 and 2. I think they take an L. Uh so yeah, I think nine and three. I think I'll be honest though. Ten and two is this very schedule's possible. nice, man. Here's why this schedule's nice. Your toughest road game is the final game of the season. Yeah, take that out. Yeah, if you take that out, you can win every other game. Yeah, your your the tough home games. I guess you could call San Diego State. I, a little I bit actually of, think they'll be favored. Maybe you you have Utah favored or Washington, but I wouldn't favor them in Corvallis. Yeah. Utah on a Friday night in Corvallis. That place is gonna burn down. UCLA their for final homecoming. year in the Pac-12. Yeah. Washington on uh, on November eighteenth, you get through those big ones and you win all the other ones. Assuming you're a better team, which it looks like you are, then you're in a one-off situation a on a Friday. Over eight and a half. I agree. It's a lock over eight and a half. I agree. Um, it's not a super lock, but it is a lock. I think it's super lock. I I don't see them like they're, they're not going twelve and zero. They they they. What if they do? I'd be very surprised. GJU doesn't seem like a twelve. In order to go twelve and zero against an okay schedule, and this is not a great schedule. No, they avoid USC. That's no. Good. When I say uh, oh, not a super challenging oh, yeah, schedule. Yeah, well, I think they get their hardest games at home, with the exception of the Oregon game. Yeah, that's what you like. I see nine and a half is where I think the number should be. Yeah, um, or maybe nine, and I think eight and a half is easily doable. I think you lock it. I think eleven and one. Is very much in the wrong box. Very much. You get they there won ten last year, and you play USC yeah. and or whoever it is in the uh, Utah in the Pac-12 championship game, and uh, and look, you might find yourself in the college oh, football playoffs. Let's go Beavs conversation. Let's go Beavs. I'm buying. Now, I'm buying a fucking house in Corvallis. Uh, I'm sure right? they would find a way to leave them out if they can. You're going to yeah. buy a house in Corvallis. <laughs> this guy. I'm joking. But He's look, ready. Look, uh, fuck, fuck the Big Ten. And fuck you, USC. I hope, I hope they get USC in the Pac-12 championship. Let's go. Give me the over on the beeves all day. I was just up in the Pacific uh, Northwest, relatively speaking, uh, this past week. The trees up there are wider than my dong, which is really saying something. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about redwoods. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking the redwoods, about. Talking the redwoods. You're talking about the redwoods. They remind you of uh, Jonathan Smith's offense, there dominating you. and reaching to the sky. Reaching to the sky. The sky's the potential. Look, before we get out of here, I'm all over the over. Patty C's all over the over. I had a chance to sit down with Michael Barker of College Football Campus, or AKA College Football Campus Tour, uh, to talk about his experiences to Corvallis. This was recorded before all this crazy news with Oregon State. So take that with a grain of salt. But here it is. Joining me on the college football experience, Oregon State Beavers 2023 season preview episode is none other than Michael Barker, aka College Football Campus Tour. You can follow him on Twitter at CFB Campus Tour, and you should because his page is incredible. I call him the king of college football stadiums because uh, uh, he's been to every single FBS stadium, most of them like multiple times. He's been to most of the FCS, uh, D2, D3, just any, any, he tweets all this out. I, I, you just got to follow it. It's got the foot. He does the photo of the game. A lot of the history, even in the off season, he stopped by the stadium. Like it, he stopped by, he stops by the stadium. Like you're visiting an old friend. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> just, uh, just here at the uh, Razor stadium again. 
Uh, how you doing, Michael? And appreciate you hopping on the show to talk about Oregon State and Reezer Stadium. Man, it's I'm happy to be here, and it's true. Like I try to sit in the stadium, even if it's empty, as long as I can. So uh, you know, West Coast, uh, we we pay attention. A lot of California players go to Oregon and Oregon State, so uh, Reezer is a good one to talk about. Yeah. I mean, I love this stadium. I haven't, I haven't been, but I'm saying from a television, uh, uh, television perspective, something about games in Corvallis. I know Austin gets all the attention, but something about games in Corvallis, maybe it's the Mark Sanchez USC team or what, but Corvallis is that sneaky road trip. I love their program. I love what they're about. That's why I, I would be really upset if they end up uh, not a, a considered part of the power five. Cause I consider them like if the pack, if the pack nine or whatever it is folds, uh, it, it's just nonsense because I consider them the same. Like they're like the same as Kansas State or the same as Mississippi State or the same as you know uh, some of these other schools that are like they deserve it. They're awesome. This home environment is awesome. They, I, they, I know they just did so, some renovations, man. But tell me about the history here. Yeah, the and like you said, they're putting their money where their mouth is with their uh, their investment in Reezer. But it opened in 1953. Uh, Parker Stadium was the name. It was known as Parker Stadium until 1999. Uh, it has current capacity 47,000, record crowd 47,249 in the Civil War matchup versus Oregon in 2012. Uh, you mentioned the renovation, so. The completing Reezer project has been going going on since the end of the 2021 season. $162 million renovation to the West Side Press Box, three premium new premium seating areas, a student welcome center, a wellness center, and a visitor's locker room. Right now, the visitors go to Gill Coliseum, which is the basketball arena, so that's new. Um, it will reduce the capacity uh, from 47,000 to 35,000. And it's scheduled to be completed by uh, their opener, September 9th versus UC Davis. And you talked about the environment, the vibe. One of the things I like the most about Reezer is they put the student section right behind the opponent's bench. And uh, you want to hear um, some language being thrown around. It's not a fun place to play or be standing on the sideline if you're an opponent. Oh man. But that's why it's so great. I mean, they got the chainsaw the turnover chainsaw. They got, a, it's just cool. It, and it, yeah, it gives it that feel just like at Oklahoma state, you know, so close to the field. Can you imagine a F uh, you know, an, an FBS playoff, not FCS FBS playoff with Oregon state hosting a playoff game. It would be fucking phenomenal uh, as, as my lights just uh, dim out here. But uh, yeah. So uh, tell me uh, how many times have you been here? So I've been there for one game, 2019. It was a Friday night game against Washington. Uh, anytime you get a P5 game on a weeknight, you try to go. It was, a, unfortunately, a dominating performance uh, of Washington's defense. They won 19-7. to They held uh, Oregon State's offense to just 119 yards, and the only touchdown they got was a pick six. So uh, I purposely have not gone. Uh, you know, 2020 was the COVID year. No fans allowed. Then word came out about this renovation project, so didn't go the last couple of years. They play a Friday night game against Utah, week five, September 29th, and that place should be electric. Uh, all the renovations will be done, and I'm really excited to, A, take in the atmosphere, and then selfishly get some new photos of Reezer. So that one's a big, big one circle on my calendar. Oh, that one. I've been circling that one too, at least to watch Jonathan Smith do an unbelievable job, resurrecting this program, getting it back to where it should be, where they're contenders to win the pac 12. Oh man. Yeah. I love the fact that they did this to the stadium too, because the stadium looks really cool. The fan base is fantastic, man. I got to get to a game folks. Uh, well, Michael, I appreciate you hopping on the show, man. And one day, hopefully I'll catch you at Reezer stadium. Absolutely. Uh, great, great place to catch a game. And these, uh, the investment they've made is going to make it even better. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for investing in that Oregon state. And look, I, hopefully everything works out. They deserve, they deserve the best of the best in college football. So folks uh, look, get over to, get over to Twitter and give Michael Barger a follow at CFB campus tour. He does unbelievable work. Michael Barker, the man, the myth, the legend Dude, Corvallis. We got to get there. Sacred spot. Let's go. That's Let's our go. team this year. We're both on the over lock it up. I can't wait. Can't wait to watch the beeves this year. Let's go beeves. New stadium looks beautiful. Nice beaver. New, new, uh, oh, they, they tore down 
one of the bleachers. They kept the, the yeah. field in the same place. Yeah. Tore down one of the bleachers. Put this. There's a little update. Sparkling little updates. What you got to do with the legendary new place? Grandstand there it looks wonderful. It's what you got to do with the legendary place. Look, folks, we're both on the over. We're breaking down all 133 teams in college football with a solo podcast for each and every team in the land. We've been doing this shit for years, so uh, check us out. And uh, yeah, uh, this is the college football experience's number one team this year. We're rooting for him. <laughs> I'm declaring this. This is our team. All right. Yeah. Folks, subscribe, get the SGPN app. It's free to download in the App Store and Google Play Store. We just had Phil Steele on the show. Go check out that episode. I know we got Randy Cross coming on, talk some football this week. Uh, so check us out. And uh, yeah, uh, the college basketball experience, subscribe. The college baseball experience, subscribe. The college football experience, obviously, subscribe. And the FCS college football experience, subscribe. Big 12 experience as well. Get out there, subscribe. Uh, folks, we come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Subscribe. Please, if you can, hop on over to iTunes. Give us a five star review. I think we deserve it. All right. And uh, yeah, come in, talk college football with us in the Discord or whatever sport, really. Sportsgatheringpodcast.com slash Discord. All right, folks, until next time, this is the college football experience. Let's go, Beavers. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here.